You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for being with us. Welcome back. Glad to be here with you. This is episode number 865. Excited to be here. Hopefully we have some uh, actionable, useful information for you guys today. Yes, as well as another question for your upcoming part 107 recurrency exam. If you haven't studied, you can just go on our website if you're a member and you have access to a couple things. I actually went on our website and studied myself and I went into part 107 and then I just watched one of the old videos with Ted. I didn't even go into the airspace and when the old video covered airspace, so I was very grateful for that. Sure. Again, every time I watch that video, I learned something new. So um, it was very, very, very interesting to watch. But anyway, today's part 107 question is brought to you by the friends and family and Drone U community. So thank you everyone in the Drone U community for partaking, engaging, and interacting and helping to motivate and inspire each other. It's truly awesome. I've already added over 100 people in the group in the last three days. It's crazy. It's fun to see it grow. Absolutely. It really is. So here's our question for today. You have been hired as a remote pilot in command by a local TV news station to film breaking news with a small unmanned aircraft. You expressed a safety concern and the station manager has instructed you to quote unquote, fly first, ask questions later. (laughs) What is this? It doesn't even finish the question. So I'm going to have to finish the question. They literally like... This isn't our quiz that I'm reading from, by the way. So this is an app that I had downloaded. Um, So the question is actually, you expressed a safety concern and the station manager has instructed you to fly first, ask questions later. What hazardous attitude does this represent? That's the question. I know because I had this question on my exam. (laughs) So the answers are invulnerability impulsivity and machoism (laughs) machoism i love that (laughs) that's actually a legitimate answer on the exam for another question is that right yes gosh i don't know i mean i would say impulsivity impulsivity is actually correct impulsivity as a hazardous attitude has the motto do it quickly the person frequently feels the need Um, to do something, anything immediately. He or she does not stop to think about the best alternative and does the first thing that comes to mind. That that was on the test, huh? Yes. Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Hopefully it's on your test now. and I think it will be. I think it will uh, be. You'll know the answer. If you need to study, just go to our website, droneu.education. Check it out. Go to part 107. You don't even have to go through the whole part 107 if it's your recurrency exam. Here is my advice. And this worked for me. It worked for Vic, and it worked for two of our other members that I know of so far. Go into our site, watch the airspace section, and then take the quiz and the test that goes over operations, loading and performance, and airspace questions. If you can get a 90% on those quizzes, you are 100% ready to go go take the recurrency uh, test. A lot of people are like, Paul, why didn't you post that you passed the recurrency exam? I didn't really think it was that big of a deal. Um, In fact, I learned a lot about uh, the recurrency once I passed the test, I didn't even go into IACRA. IACRA actually tells you, do not file a new application for Part 107. And then it says, go to this page on the FAA website and check out what to do. That page has absolutely no instructions on it. And I found out from an FAA uh, employee that you're just supposed to hold on to your exam uh, sheet, your recurrency exam sheet. And then if you are ever asked to present your remote uh, pilot certificate to showcase your card, and that piece of paper. Is that right? Yes. I this don't know if they're going 2018 to 2018, be... and that's our system. I... <laughs> oh, well. That's well, all right. Whatever you know, works. it's a stark difference from the message that the FAA said yesterday at Interdrone, which I am not at Interdrone, just to clarify. I've been getting a bunch of text messages. Meet me here, meet me there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't answered any of them because I've gotten so many of them. I appreciate your tenacity and wanting to hang out and meet up. Um, but I am not at Interdrone uh, this year. And I, I just, 
last year there was just really nothing beneficial out of it. You, you always have a lot of fun because the people in this community are a lot of fun. So you're always going to have a good time. I just don't think it was financially advisable to go. I mean, last year we went, we made a connection with Unique uh, and we got that new drone. That's awesome. But it was, it fell short of so many promises. I was just more disappointed than anything. So in all honesty, it was like, you know what? Okay. But the FAA, the new uh, administrator had gone and he made a statement about how, quote unquote, we are open for business. And um, I think that's great. Let's just see some more actions about that. Because uh, since March, that was the same message. And we haven't seen very much since then. And I would uh, just like to continue putting on some light pressure to the FAA and say, you know, we need to keep things rolling. Otherwise, businesses are going to be killed in waiting for waivers. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest issues. They need mm -hmm. to create these systems. They obviously have a, an issue with systems. And I think the example is the, the remote pilot in command. I mean, not getting a new printed card. Or maybe they're making fun of us by saying, ha, 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 the new cards are already on the way. So who knows? Doubt it. I do too. <laughs> Let's get to today's question. Let's do. Which is uh, brought to you by our friends at... Colorado drone chargers. Colorado drone chargers. Yep. Do you ever need to charge a lot of batteries at one time because you just got a day rate, $1,500, $2,000, $2,500. You need to charge a lot of batteries. Or maybe you're flying real estate and you're only getting $200 per job, but you're doing five or six per day. You need to have your batteries charged more than anyone else. Colorado drone chargers can help you do exactly that by simultaneously charging four batteries at one time. And there is a difference between that and the DJI chargers. That simultaneous charging will literally charge four Phantom 4 Pro Extended Life batteries in about an hour and 15 minutes. Four batteries, hour and 15 minutes. You can't do that with any other charger. Check them out, coloradodronechargers.com. Hi, my name is John Carpenter. I'm with Raven Visual Solutions in Oklahoma. I've been listening for almost a year now and have learned a ton. I appreciate everything that you guys do for the drone community. My question is about Lance, and I recently went online to request authorization for Will Rogers Airport nearby at a college campus and found out that they had pulled back on their Lance authorizations for that airport. Now I'm going through the online process to file for authorization, but my client needs services now. To add to the story, a colleague of mine has um, 50 feet AGL authorization for that campus, and that may be my backup plan. So I, I guess I have a two-part question. One, is there anything I can do to accelerate the approval process for authorizations? And if not, how would you recommend that I go about using my colleague's authorization for a recurring project, a construction progress project. Any insight you can provide would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. I'm excited for today, Rob, because I know this is something that plagues drone operators all over the country. The frustration is real for those that want to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And we've got a show coming up soon about drone incursions into airspace, which essentially means non-authorized UAS flights. And uh, we're going to be really excited about releasing some of those numbers, as I believe it will tell a broader picture about the industry. But before, uh, before we do that, um, I think it's really important to say... There was actually a debate about renting, quote unquote, authorizations from operator to operator. And there... The debate between who? Uh, well, it was on the commercial SUAS group. Or it was either the commercial SUAS or UAS legal group. Loretta Alke, which I just found out was uh, at one of the meetings that I was just at. And I really wanted to meet her. Mm. And I didn't get a chance to meet her. Very... She was at the DJI event, and I didn't, right. I didn't even see her. I'm kind of bummed. Anyway, long story short, uh, Loretta LK and another drone lawyer and Vic and another person were all talking about renting authorizations because Vic rents authorizations. I know pretty much every single drone pilot I know rents authorizations because it's kind of like the whole ideology in the book Give and Take by Adam Grant. By giving things without yeah. expecting anything in return, people tend to be more willing to help you. They tend to be more receptive. Uh, it, overall, it's kind of a good attitude mantra. In fact, in our site, for members, there's the where in the world so that you can know where people are and figure out what authorizations they have to do just that. Exactly. So we actually have an entire thing built around this mm -hmm. on the website to help you rent authorizations. Well, anyway, going back to this argument that was going on in one of the Facebook groups, 
um, Loretta was saying, if I remember correctly and if I quote you wrong, Loretta, please do not be afraid to, uh, to, to let me know. But she was saying that um, nowhere in the FAA have they ever said it's allowed to rent authorizations. But it's kind of the day and age with the FAA. Unless they explicitly tell you you can't do something, people are doing it. So, and I, I mean, you look at the example, too, of David Boggs, right? When his drone got shot down and Vic just sent me another person had their Inspire 2 shot down. It is clear as glass in the law mm-hmm. that if you shoot an aircraft down, that it is a federal crime. Right. Um, and drones were just defined as aircraft. Yet we've had multiple cases now where the FAA has not come out and said anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, unless we make a statement, these these issues are going to continue to propagate. Well, so on that note, if um, on the note about renting authorizations, when somebody gets an authorization, it's specific to that person, obviously. But how much is that authorization based on that person's ability to fly, experience. It's not based on any it's of that, right? It's not based on any of that it's at all. Based it's based on just your person. This is what you said your use is. We this is how you said you were going to avoid risk and thus uh, satisfy the safety or right. the performance-based standards is what the FAA calls it. Right. Okay. Everything, every waiver, document, law, rule, everything is written around one ideology if you want to understand the FAA scalable which they'll never tell you scalable but scalable performance based standards that's how the FAA comes up with everything and you can get one as a company as well an authorization right you can so that i mean that implies that there would be more than one person using it well to i would con- suggest to continue this story in the group um, I mean, th- another person had said that, you know, unless the FAA explicitly says you can't do it, everyone's doing it. And I mean, the another thing came up, an FAA official, and I forget his name, came out and said the biggest issue with renting your authorizations is that the tower needs to be able to communicate with the UAS operator. So if you rent a airspace authorization from someone else, which typically the cost is like $25, at least that's what Vic and most of our membership uh, charges each other, 25 bucks. Uh, the whole idea is that you have to communicate with air traffic control. So, for example, if you are renting someone's authorization, you need to be proactive and, ha- and have some way to communicate with air traffic control, which could simply mean if air traffic control were to try to contact you and they were to call the person with the authorization, they need to be able to contact you immediately. In fact, I think the best thing, I would just nix what I just said. The best thing is contact ATC, you know, notify them because some authorizations don't say that you have to notify, some do. I would just notify ATC, say, hey, we're flying here, remote pilot, like this is our authorization, but our remote pilot in command contact phone number is X. Mm -hmm. We always have to leave the line of communication open um, I think it's something that man pilots have kind of led the industry in the wrong direction with we say one thing, do another. N- we need to, as remote pilots, really build respect in this industry sure. and, and do what we say. And, and part of that is being communicative with air traffic control. Because at the end of the day, um, what if something were to happen? What if air traffic control says, you need to land now? We've got a, a, a busted plane coming in on approach right where you are, blah, 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 blah. We just have to be cognizant of other people. Uh, and we have to, what's the word? Uh, it starts with a C. Um, gosh, I'm really slow this morning. But when you are considerate, when you are considerate oh, right. of other people. Courtesy, yeah. You really, I mean, gosh, I get so mad at people every single day for their driving because they just don't think multiple steps ahead of where they are. And if you take life where you think multiple steps ahead of where you are and think about cause effect cause if i do this and then this and then this and then this what is the cause what is the effect i promise you your life will like take a radical change if you start thinking like that i will say it comes a little more difficult to some people than others but it is a good skill to develop agreed it's not something that just came out of nowhere rob i mean those habits and driving have been built up over a decade <laughs> Let's not talk about driving. (laughs) Okay, let's go back to the question. So he says, you know, what are my options? One of the things that few people, I think, picked up on in our airspace authorization video was something that both Vic and I said at the very end of the video, which was, you know, guys, what you should do is be proactive and just file wide area authorizations for every airport within 500 miles of yourself. I'm not sure that we said 500 miles, but we're like in your region. Anywhere that you think that you'll fly. Exactly. And, And to be honest, I mean, like, uh, 
I've only got, I think, like five or six airspace authorizations, and they're mostly in New Mexico and Colorado, and yet I've been flying in Texas and Florida and New York and California and Utah and Nevada. And it's just like at some point you should just pay someone to file airspace authorizations for every airport. Um, or you could just be a drone you member and then find someone with authorization and boom, yeah. um, it's done. Now he asked another question where he said, what about uh, using this on a recurrent basis? I think that you should make some sort of financial deal with him. Maybe he even wants to come out there. You guys may even have fun together. Who knows? For me, I'm not a big fan of flying with other people unless it's for fun just because I'm so uh, systematic in my process. If anyone distracts me, I just tend to get annoyed and upset. So as far as using somebody else's authorization, renting, whatever, borrowing, is there, is there a procedure or is it just an understanding? It's like a verbal understanding between the two people. Is it basically that simple? I mean, that's how uh, pretty much everyone that I've ever had someone, I, I, the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, and in every case that I've seen, yes. Yeah. No, now, I, is I, that I, the right so way too. to go? No. Am I giving you legal advice? Absolutely not. Well, what's the right way to go? I think we should leave that up to the uh, listener. But for me, really? I, mean, I, I okay. think that... I mean, I'm, look, just thinking of, you, I'm just thinking of prudence, not like some you, legal argument. Yeah, if you do not create some sort of written agreement, and this could even be via email, you are leaving yourself open for issues yeah. if someone does exactly. not adhere to their promises. So, that's what I'm getting at, is I think it would be prudent to do some sort of... I mean, it could be a one-page document. I mean, it seems like there's no such thing as a one-page document anymore. Business canvas. Understand, but as far and as if an you don't have one of those for your business, you are already losing. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, learn more about that in the business class. But which is actually coming out today, right? Is it? They say it's on I the website. So. I mean, I hope so. Anyways, yeah. Sorry, maybe I got uh, maybe I uh, jumped ahead there, <laughs> well, but uh, I know I'm, that it's been uploaded into the background uh, infrastructure of the website. That's why I'm so giddy about it. My apologies. I'm the one that threw the squirrel in the room, and then you just. Jumped went, on it. Went after it. It was like a nut. But no, I think the point is that it Squirrel would be prudent for there to be some sort of written agreement as to how the person is going to operate and how they're going to respect your authorization, et cetera. That's what I was kind of getting at. But in terms of his question about a way of expediting getting his own, have you learned anything? Has Vic learned anything oh, about how to expedite? Thank you very much for reminding me to tell that story. Um, yeah, there is, there's definitely a way to expedite the process. Again, this always comes down to, and I talked about this in my sales class at the business course, uh, relationships, 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 relationships. You should know every air traffic controller at your local airport or wherever he's trying to go. Did you know you can actually go on a tower tour whenever you want to. Um, and it's something that, you know, the tower guys love showing off the tower. This is the best way to get in their graces. And this actually worked for Vic because what Vic needed to do was fly in a zero grid area near DIA, which if you're not familiar with DIA is Denver International Airport. Um, it is a huge airport and they're doing a new construction of some new multifamily housing. And Vic needed to get out there soon as well. Uh, he could not get out there. He had already filed uh, a request through Lank and through um, the traditional system. I think it's through the drone zone now. Um, and, uh, it, you know, he knew that it wasn't going to be fast enough. So he went directly to ATC and he said, look, I already filed. I already said I'm going to do this. I already said I'm going to do that. I would really need your help for this project. And you know what? People listen. We're all human. And, mm -hmm. and it all comes down to how you treat people, in my opinion. And, for sure. um, you know, there was a guy a long time ago who did a show on Netflix. It was like hack the world or hacking life or something. He talks about in one of the skits, how you can get what you want from, uh, an airline. Line, what, are, what are they called? A gate agent. And it's really interesting because I went back and watched that a couple weeks ago and I was thinking of the book, Never Split the Difference. Man, that book is so important. And this is another perfect example when you are trying to create relationships and you are worried and don't have the confidence that you can create a positive relationship, go read that book because you shouldn't go into anything nervous and you also shouldn't go in there expecting anything. I think it's really important to go meet with an air traffic controller, create a friend, uh, not necessarily a you know a business relationship, but don't also don't BS the guy either. Say, look, I really want to create a, a stronger relationship with you guys because I think it's important for my business, and I also think it's important for the communication of the industry as a whole so we can grow together. Mm -hmm. And if you genuinely mean that, I think it'll go a long way. So that relationship's really important, but it's not necessarily going to help you expedite your yes, it authorization. will one hundred percent. How so? The Vic, the only way Vic got out of DIA was because of ATC, and it was in like two days. So somehow 
the process of submitting the request for the authorization I was think, communicated to the ATC people. Yes, and, and that, they, I do believe that is a key okay. point here is that they do have to file so for airspace authorization and then directly go to ATC and say, here's my auth, you know, Here's uh, my request, here's and my somehow request. they can... I really need to get this done. Hmm. Um, cool. By the way, the um, the FAA has asked us again to correct the video that says, in writing your authorizations, and if I don't do this, some illegal operator will do it for me. Well, there's proof out there now for that, and that's uh, the show that I think we're going to do in a week, so I'm excited about that. I, we can remove the statement. It goes without saying yeah. that that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So we got to be real. I think it's important. Yeah. No, that's very so, true. Cool. Um, anyway, guys, if Hope you have a helped. question, please go to askdroneu.com. Also, I love reading your reviews. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, or Spotify, wherever you listen to the show. And by the way, to the question asker who said they heard us on Spotify, that actually like re- made my day. So like, thank you. I know it probably doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but it does to me. So thank you. And guys, we are grateful for you as always. And we mean that. And we are here producing content to help you genuinely. Uh, and if you're wondering what classes we're working on right now, it's a new ultimate mapping class. We're also working on a new don't crash course and overall new don't crash course. And then we're adding individual drones into that specifically Mavic 2 Pro, Phantom 4 Pro version 2, Inspire 2 and M600. And I'm kind of changing up the don't crash course so it's more like comprehensive and don't crash. And it's based in what you absolutely need to know before you go fly. Hmm. And then what you should know to avoid crashing. And then what you really don't need to know and doesn't matter. So I, cool. I think that's really Excited important. For all that. And I think it's really good to, to, as everyone hates me saying, be succinct. <laughs> <laughs> that's for you, John Elliott. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is... Ask Drone You.